All right, thanks for staying with us now. Who is an electorate? Referencing a publication from The Guardian, the class of Nigerians called the electorate is the most difficult and critical to the Nigerian democratic experiment. You wonder why they, um, rather, you wonder who they are. The electorate are the Nigerians who are eligible to cast votes in each successive general elections. They are presumably those citizens of Nigeria that have satisfied the constitutional requirements of competence to vote and have represented themselves for re registration, um, presented themselves for re registration as potential voters. What this implies is that regardless of their competence to vote, constitutionally where the uh, where the eligible voters fail neglect and refuse to register to vote they will be unable to exercise any franchise it's happening already and the 2023 general elections will be contested by different um, characters like you want to call them not some of the aspirants are driven by delusions of sainthood and are uh, an inflamed ego while some might have Good intentions, we're still watching them. So today we're asking, how can we educate the people that will elect these people to office, you know, to look beyond presidency and uh, ahead of the 2023 elections? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Uti, I want to bring in Dele in a minute, but I just wanted to say to you that I am so guilty of this, mm -hmm. right? Prior to uh, recent time, maybe 2019 and all of that, mm -hmm. my ideology of voting is that if a particular party mm -hmm. is the first candidate I'm voting for presidency, mm -hmm. I just go across board, board for both not caring. I, and funny thing is that maybe it's just this particular season where I know a few of the House of Rep members, the Senate mm -hmm. members that are going for Senate and all of that, that I am even paying attention. I am very guilty. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be me that I'm supposed to be discussing issues that <laughs> concerns the nation. Mm -hmm. So you cannot imagine the number of people that don't even bother who their uh, House of Representatives uh, would, would be, mm -hmm. who their senators would be, who their House of Assembly member would be, who their counselors will be, you know, the, they, nobody just cares. So once you are supporting a particular party, what the usual thing to do is just carry your thumb, mm -hmm. go across board, just wherever you see that party, you just go. And mm -hmm. this has been the system. Because we are trying to see how we can move this nation forward. And we have to be very strategic about, you know, the right people, mm -hmm. putting them in those places that have critical roles to play in decision and policy making, that they can change policies that eventually would transform the Nigeria that we're hoping to transform. But w what are your thoughts on this? What's your experience like for voting? Well, um, I have to agree with you. Um, and I don't think that it's a case of some. I think it's a case of all. Um, but for me, I like to look at the foundation. I think you've gotten to the point now where something has to give. Something must change, which is why you're paying attention. Hmm. Previously, what mattered was presidency, governors and, and the, the party that's what mattered but as people are as the situation is has worsened keeps worsening um it's come to a head and people are like look we want change we want change we want we want things to be different but for me the key focus there for me has been the issue of accountability where we've always said ah, the country is getting worse the country is getting worse everything is either um pointing at the office of the president or is pointing at the state governors. Nobody mm. really cares about anything else. When we talk about things going bad, nobody's talking about your local government uh, chairman. Nobody's talking about your senators. Nobody's talking about your house of reps. They come up in different parts of the conversation, but the way the entire picture fits together and what each person's responsibility has never come into the consciousness of, um, in my opinion, has never come into the consciousness of the average man. Mm -hmm. When we think about elections, what we think is president, what we think is, is, is governors, Governor. which is why when we have um, elections, you see that in some areas nobody comes out because, and then people start saying things like, oh, we didn't know there was an election. So even at the height of this, um, we all are waiting for 2023, we all want to see what's happening. Elections happened a few months ago. Nobody came out. Nobody yeah. came out. Mm -hmm. People said they weren't aware. 
So clearly, we're, we're still even not the even one that happened that point. in Lagos. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're not at that point yet where people are even on fire to say, you know what? And this is the time, maybe sadly, maybe even a bit too late now because the candidates are all picking up. You know, it's been a show in the, in forms, the media for yeah. the last you know, few weeks, picking up their forms. Everybody's making this big fuss. But the fact is that even you as the electorate, if you're not part of a party, you're not even part of this process of selecting who the eventual candidate will, will be. be. Hmm. So that in itself is... Oh, and the, it's even another issue. Is the higher level of understanding because hmm. um, if you are given limited choices and you say you want change, but you were not part of the choice process and you are then presented with, hmm. for lack of a better word, the devil and the deep blue sea, well, I don't see how you're going to get much change from that. Absolutely. On that note, Daily Faratimi is a lawyer, author, and member of the Citizens' Rally Against Oppression. He served as president of um, the Student Union at Lagos State University, Lasso, between 19, 1994 and 95, and was called to Nigerian Bar in 1999. He established the Daily Faratimi & Co. in 2002, a full-service law firm, which is known as uh, the name DF Legal. He remained in active legal practice until his retirement in 2018 at the age of 50. Um, he's a political commentator and author of the book, Do Not Die in Their War. Dele Farutmi is very passionate about the birth of a new Nigeria and there is no better guest to be having this conversation with than himself. And he's joined us live via Zoom. Thank you so much, Dele Farutmi, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening, Uwa. Thank you. So, Dele, so you heard our banter on this conversation because this is something that I am very guilty of. I can't lie. Even up until the last election that I voted in, until my PVC got stolen in 20, mm. after the 2015 election, even up until 2015 election, I was very guilty of this. I was not paying attention. All I was just focused on are the executives, you know, the um, what's called presidency and governor, and that's it. You know, so it was just anybody i vote there whoever is representing your party i was not paying attention to the individuals and we've seen it time and time again because you are you are an advocate for someone i mean for for policy changes for a lot of things that would would eventually reform you know the system that eventually births this new nigeria that we're praying for right mm -hmm. so um how do we even start this conversation when we say we want to look beyond the 2023 elections right i mean presidency rather again around this 2023 elections that is just around the corner how do we even start this conversation educating the electorate what is important and what they should really really focus their energy on mm -hmm. let me say this to you i'm always happy to come on your show for one key reason you think ahead even though you start with all these your bands and everything making light of it but deep inside there are some deep issues that you treat. Yeah. And this is one of them. I, I was advising some people a couple of days back, and I said to them that in order to understand Nigeria sufficiently, you must maintain a degree of insanity that allows you to compartmentalize the issues and then deal with them in their separate compartments. Yeah. The problem with us is that we have mostly, I'm sorry for the peeping sound, that's Nepal doing his thing. Welcome to my country. No, it's fine. So is, we, we take issues and then we look at the whole forest without seeing the trees. Hmm. So we keep thinking presidency. When they are selling you change, they will be talking presidency. But the error we have made for so long, which you admitted to earlier on, is that we have ignored the individual trees that have made up the evil forest mm. called Nigeria. When you are dealing with a situation where governors are ignored and they too blame the failure, their own failures, they blame it oh, on presidency. the president. Mm -hmm. And then the people in the state houses of assemblies are ignored mm -hmm. and, and then they blame the failure on the presidency mm -hmm. but you notice that the single denominating factor that is common to all is that wherever you go across nigeria the ruling class has become richer even the, as the people have descended into penury mm -hmm. so what you then re must what, what we were discussing a few days ago was that it is time that we localize these elections. Mm. 
if the Abuja monster is too far to touch, the one in your state capital is not too far away. Mm -hmm. The one representing you in the state houses of assembly is not too far away. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, there are several people who are working towards ensuring that in the coming election, we are able to dispassionately and objectively examine the candidates who are running for House of Assembly, those who are running for House of Reps, running in the Senate, those who will be running for governors. It's not enough to be talking about the angel that will take over our soul rock. Mm. We must make sure that that angel that is taking over our soul rock with his brilliant plan as people who are taking over state houses of assemblies, who are taking over state governors' houses, it cannot be business as it's usual. usual. Absolutely. You see, we that's why I say you get ahead of yourself with some of the topics that you deal with. You speak and we are speaking as though there will be an election in 2023 because we live in the bubble of Lagos. Mm. And yet, you dare not drive more than 50 kilometers outside the city perimeter. Whichever city in Nigeria you might be living in, you cannot drive 50 kilometers outside the city limit without being afraid that you might either be kidnapped for ransom or killed by one non-state agent or the other. And yet, we are pl planning an election in less than a year. But if we do come to that bridge, we must understand that until we localize all of these elections, those who have been ruling in your state, what are their records? Mm. Mm -hmm. What have they done before? Those who are asking to rule you now, what are their records? What are they offering you? There is a complete failure of governance, and everything cannot be blamed on the federal government. It's very easy. Okay, look at it's painful, but I live in Lagos and I have no choice but to talk about where I live. It is impossible for the hegemony in Lagos State, for instance, to blame a federal government that has had effective control of this state for 23 years. So it is time that we now begin to look, okay, so what is its record in education? What is the record in healthcare delivery? What is the record in road infrastructure? What is the record in transparency? What is the record of service delivery hmm. to the people? What are the returns on the investments? Hmm. These are questions that must be asked, and it cannot be lost in the noise of somebody who wants to be president or not. It is enough that the system demands a radical overhaul. But that radical overhaul will not happen simply because you have an angel as the president. It is imperative that you must be voting to a plan and it cannot be only for a president. Even if you have an angel for president and the people in the House of Reps are nasty, the same ones that are there now where they are offering mic in the National Assembly, well, nothing is going to change. They will just be offering mic. If they are not offering mic, they will be uh, silent, enough, is enough. Something will happen. People will be fainting inside the National Assembly. And what has happened? So, and then to crown it all, it will still be the same people who are able to pardon the token ones that might be convicted for their crimes. So if we truly desire change, you can't be looking to the presidency alone. We must localize these elections. You sit down in your state and you are blaming the Fulani that is in Sokoto. Meanwhile, the Fulani is in your Sokoto. Your state governor who speaks your language is your own brother your state house of assembly members, your council chairmen, their councillors, all of these people live with you. But you are talking about the one that is far away in Sokoto that is even suffering as much as you. These are the questions that we need to be asking of ourselves as we are approaching 2023. Hmm. It cannot be business as usual. We must localize all the elections. We can't just be talking about the presidency alone. Who is going to all the other offices? These are issues that must be tackled. Absolutely. Mm. So, I mean, you know, when we have conversations like this, I struggle um, to think about the options that we're given because that's really what it is. You know, when you go to vote, you're not voting from the entire 200 million people in Nigeria. You're voting from a limited pool. 
Um, how do we start to even ensure? Because in all the stories that we've been seeing in the press and the media so far, everybody picking up the forms, they're still the same set of names. So even if we say today that we're um, interested and we need to look beyond um, those two offices, right? How do we even start to get the right people to the fore if we say we truly want change? Because if I get there and I say, okay, I've expanded my, my knowledge beyond the executive and I'm looking at all these other arms of government, really, what choices do I have? How can we improve that process? Um, what I'll say is this. You know, I said earlier on that who has this, you ladies generally have this capacity to jump the gun. You go a little further than others are discussing. Right now, everybody is talking about the different people declaring their intentions. But you ladies have gone beyond that already. You're already talking about the localization of the election. That is actually about three steps ahead of where we are right now. The way we have sought to conceptualize this struggle, which is why I spoke to the compartmentalization of the issues. Yeah. We've seen this as, okay, at this stage, be talking to people about registering to vote. The next stage would be pressurize INEC to ensure that he does his own part to deliver the voters' cards. The third stage was meant to be, okay, so parties by now would have completed their primary processes and would have clearer pictures of who the candidates are. Now, understand this. We must, of necessity, look beyond the two that have identified themselves as being grossly incompetent and unfit to govern. And that is both APC and the PDP, which are one and the same. In my opinion, there would, of course, be outliers amongst them who might think that they can change the system by joining that, those parties. If we have indeed registered to vote as we are hoping that people have done, our voices will be sufficient to, to influence. Because let me give you an example. Last election, we had about 27 million people voting in the presidency. That's in spite of the odd voting and inflation of votes and everything. And yet, this is a country where you ostensibly have close to 90 million registered voters as at that time. So we're thinking, even if we can only double the number of goes to the poll in the coming election. It simply means that there is a decisive voice coming to the poll. Now, that decisive voice lends strength to younger elements who are in smaller parties, who have good ideas, but do not have the finances to compete with these monsters. And it also gives strength to the outliers who might be in the stealing machines, but who have good intentions. Mm. The intention of our own coalition is to look at candidates across board, across states, across local government areas. We will, where possible, queue behind parties and candidates and campaign for them based on our conviction as to their capacity to deliver. However, there are no votrons anywhere. Nigerians must understand that the changes required are systemic in nature. No matter who the man is that we might be voting, it must be that we have made those decisions on the basis of the ideas and the issues represented by those men, not the parties. Unless the party platform offers a basis for conviction that they will do as they have said because they are fronted by men of honor, not those who will say they will restructure with one breath and the next moment they will be telling you they don't even know the meaning of the word restructuring. Mm. So since we are speaking hypothetically to the possibility of an election in 2023, I would say that the critical point is that we are at an inflection point in Nigeria there is a unique opportunity because certain forces are aligning that were never really truly aligned. And if this continues, we would have a unique opportunity to make a, perhaps a dent in the, in the armor of this horrible system. Mm. But we must be clear as to what we want. The goal. Even if they made an angel the president and every other office is occupied by these same people, well, it's the same thing. You just get a worse, maybe perhaps a more articulate, more intelligent version of Buhari, but that's the best you'll get in 2023, if we are not careful. 
absolutely so, you know what let's take a break okay. when we come back from the break very quick break we'll continue the conversation stay with us we'll be right back Now, if you just tuned in, we are having an amazing conversation. We're discussing the electorate and we're asking, can we as the electorate look beyond presidency ahead of this 2023 elections? And we have with us Daily Farutimi. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0810384663. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. Um, Uti, you had a question? Yeah, so no, I even wanted to take this comment because it, it was sort of uh, in line with what um, Daily just said it says great ladies at ways the narrative is going to change in the next elections a lot of people are going to vote for individuals not parties politics is beyond social media discourse it's a game on a real table with realignment reconciliation and re-strategizing for a better society and he also says nice dress all of you got tonight evidently it's Salah celebrations um why i wanted to read that because what i took away from what um Daily just said was the fact that it's no longer about business as usual. You said, I just go and I thumbprint all the way down. Now we've got to shine the spotlight on the individual. So it's like building a fantasy football team. You pick one person that you like from Manchester, one person from Chelsea, and you build a team. So what we're saying now is that the group of people that we're looking at are people that it doesn't matter what party you are. If we are educated enough to understand what you bring to the table, that's what we need to be cho choosing, and that's how we need to be viewing the elections. So for me, if that is my roadmap now, how many parties do I then scan? How many people do I scan? I mean, I'm looking for cheat sheets. So my question is, <laughs> <laughs> how can you help me simplify this process and understand? Because if we truly, you know, a lot of people are well-meaning. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, it's overwhelming. It, 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 you, no matter even when you have good intentions and you want to look for information, I don't know if there's anything that our guests can give us that just says, here's where you should start, here's how you should even begin this journey. Because a lot of people truly want change, but they just don't know what to do. Absolutely. Uti, <laughs> I'll say this to you here and now, mm -hmm. and you can take it to the bank. The first, the second, the third, Mm -hmm. And most important of all of the things you need to be looking out for in whoever you are voting for any office, including dog catcher in the coming election, restructuring. Mm. Nigeria must be restructured. It's not just about the president. When the president, assuming we do find a candidate who pushes the gospel of restructuring, pushes it, it must be echoed by members of his party running for the House of Reps, running for the Senate, running for the state houses of assembly, running to become governors. Because that is the single most important thing in the Nigerian agenda. It is even the only way that we might, might, not do that word, might, survive the impending disintegration of this construct of lives without restructuring being clearly placed on the table don't just ignore the person the person just wants to be the next person at the feeding trough nigeria <sighs> has been emasculated by a constitution that is essentially a coup against the people that coup against the people has sustained a lie for 23 years and counting or almost 23 years now but he can't sustain it for much longer. So if somebody is talking to you, not just the presidential candidate of the party, don't let somebody come and start lying to you like they lied in 2015 when they were talking restructuring, like they lied when they put together the, the El Rufai committee just before the 2019 election. It must be an article of faith. Our people must understand that the foundation of the entirety of the Nigerian mess we are in today is that constitution. Mm. Change anything you like. If you don't touch that constitution, Nigeria will be worse off this time next year and the year after that one. But one more thing just to drive this home so that we all understand it clearly. The Nigerian ruling class as a whole Barring few exceptions, I have no problem with the 1999 constitution. They are very, very happy with it. 
So anybody who is telling you he wants to change it after the election, but he can't talk about it now, is lying. He simply wants to get to that office to be the one to manage the system of stealing. Yeah, because I was going to... The problem with Nigeria... Yeah, go Sorry, because, because I was going to say to you that this current structure that we are having, right, it's beneficial, right? The, the center is so powerful. It is beneficial to all politicians put together across all parties, right? So who will now say, is it, in, you know how we say it now, so now my turn, Miss Evno will come get opportunities to take its money. Do you get, so who do you think would really have that willpower? Even if they say it and they echo it, yeah. what is the guarantee that when they eventually get into power, they would actually bring it to effect? Oh, uh, let me tell you this. I just concluded a series of talk, a four-part series, and I titled it Your PVC or Your Gun. Mm -hmm. You know, my people have this proverb. They say where the old man lie down, sleep, what he sees there, the youth that is perched on top of the Iroko tree will not see it. Nigeria is at, uh, is at an inflection point. If it fails to find a path to restructuring peacefully, it will end up in a war that it has not planned for. Some people are planning for it. A lot of us are blissfully unaware of the consequences of some of these things that are happening. But I'm saying it full chest, being able to put together the different parts that I'm observing on a daily basis and that I've been observing for the better part of my life that the current system has run its cycle. Hmm. It is not sustainable. If it is, if it does not disintegrate Nigeria in, the quest, in their quest for 2023 power, it would have rendered it so completely ungovernable that if you do not give the people fresh hope to drive the impetus to try and see if we can salvage this country, it will dissolve into violence and anarchy. Our strengths have been constrained by a constitution that we have no say about. Some people have already lost their capacity to reason with this system. Look, anyone who is truly desirous of changing Nigeria but is afraid to place a restructuring plan on the ballot, because without it being on the ballot, nobody can touch that evil document called Decree 24. But if somebody is brave enough to place that most alternative plan on the ballot and the party can adopt it, it energizes the people, douses the tension, particularly in the Southeast, in the, south, in part, in the entire Southern part of Nigeria, where people feel as though they are not even citizens, but slaves mm. within their own country. Let's not fool ourselves with that. I've said a lot of things that most of you sometimes think are outlandish. But I challenge anyone to point at a single one of those things that I've said that have proven to be false. Mm. I am saying it without equivocation. If Nigeria does not find a way to peacefully, using the electoral process, place restructuring on the ballot with a clear plan will end up in that war. Worst case scenario by 2024. Worst case. We're already there. All you need to do, put a map of Nigeria on your wall and then look at the part of Nigeria where you can travel 50 kilometers outside any city limit in any part of Nigeria. And then you tell me if we are not already at war. Hmm. What we need to be doing is envisioning a better future that we can sell to the populace so that they might pull back from the brink of the abyss to which most of them have been pushed. If we are not at war, why are people crossing the Sahara? Hmm. Why are they dying crossing the Mediterranean? Absolutely. Because we are not Ukraine, they are not calling it war. Because hmm. we are not Ukraine. We're so, already at war. People are escaping. They are mm. migrating again. They are escaping. Mm. So, Dele, you mentioned one. Yes. You said you said restructuring. You were supposed to give us three points. Do you want to quickly touch on that before we take some more comments? Oh, those is restructuring, 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 oh. restructuring. Oh, okay. So, that's one to three. That is the anchor. <laughs> okay. Yes. Awesome. It's not just three. To mm. infinity. To infinity. Mm. 
Mm. Every other thing flows from there. Mm. Every other thing flows from there. Every other thing. Without that, Nigeria is already dead. Mm. If you don't restructure, it will die. It's that simple. I might sound like a prophet of doom to some, but use the evidences that are gathered by your eyes mm. and your ears. Look around you. I just told you. I know that sounds funny to you. But I dare anyone drive 50 kilometers outside your city limits. And mm. if you're a policeman, wear your uniform and move around in the southeast. Mm. And then tell me we are not at war. We are lying to ourselves on several levels. And the only thing that will bring us out of this self-imposed state of war, free the people for heaven's sake. Mm. Let Nigerians become citizens in their own country. Is it too much for our politicians to understand that you cannot continue telling a person he's a citizen of the world and then you make him a slave in his own country? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so let me take some comments. Please always put your names when you bring this comment. A leader is a person who thinks about the future, not today. A leader is Ni in Nigeria saw the Lekki Free Trade Zone, Eco Atlantic, 10 years ago today. The largest investment in that area is happening. Uh, for the first time in this country, we are moving in the right direction. The 1999 constitution is the 1979 constitution as amended. I believe Awolowo contested under the same constitution in 1979 and 1983. Always put your name because if you don't put your name, we don't know who you are. Um, Uti, you have some comments. Okay, so I have a follow-up comment from um, Bobby Kennedy in Jalingo. He says, politics for me is a medium for people to get emancipation and be emancipated from the clutches of oppression and imperialism. They don't know we know more than they think. Most of us are guilty of not voting from the councillor up to the president if we really want to get it right in Nigeria. Um, and the second comment is from Daniel Illo. He says, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Happy Salah to you all. Concerning the electorate looking beyond presidency ahead of the 2023 election, let us be careful this time around. APC promised us change and they ended up deceiving us and themselves. To me, APC means <laughs> all promises cancelled. Let us be very careful in 2023 and pray that God looks into the heart of a genuine person who will take us forward to the next level. Nigeria should not be deceived by the parties. Let us vote for individuals um, to go forward. So Sister Uti saying you are looking beautiful is an understatement. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, thank Daniel. you, Daniel. <laughs> you know, Daniel, you also you are you're also making a big mistake because where he said that let us pray that God brings a person that has a good heart. We are still focusing on that um, center. We're taking the, taking the, the responsibility the, away from yes, ourselves. Yes, from ourselves, right, Daily? So can you just help us because you know, whenever we're with you, we're having so much fun and the time just keeps flying, you know. Oh. Can you help us see this thing that it is beyond us saying we want to elect a particular person? Because that is not the solution to Nigeria's problem. It's a set of people. Do you understand? So how do we start you to know, see? You know, so, uh, Ua, I am beginning to align myself with a school of thought that is... That they, they propounded this theory that Africans have been deliberately trained to learn by road instead of being trained to use their brains. Hmm. It's unfortunate that we keep chasing our tails like a demented dog. We have tried personnel changes all these years. But because ignorance has been so weaponized in Nigeria that people spout nonsense full chest. Look at the man that just sent that comment. Chebi Awolowo ran under the same 1999 constitution. That's a blatant lie. And then the other one was talking about a, a person with vision who took people's land and built free trade zone. Free trade zone, go and look at the number of people who have been rendered homeless, not gotten any compensation paid to them. You are pointing at lies as achievement. This is because people don't bother to use their brain and look at the evidence of their own eyes so that they can then make up their mind. The fact of the matter is that systems are designed to produce results. Hmm. Nigeria is designed to produce exactly what it is producing. It is not by accident that men that we thought were good men will get into these offices and they achieve exactly what the system are designed that they would achieve. Nonsense. When you build anything without purpose, without vision, 
what happens is that perversion sets in. Nigeria was not built with purpose. Hegemonies govern nations everywhere in the world. You bring your hegemony, then you take on the smaller ones, you assimilate them for everybody's progress. But not in Nigeria, because the hegemony governing Nigeria is not built with vision. It's built simply for the acquisition of power and money, impunity and privileges, nothing more. So when you now keep cycling people through a system that is designed to, it's like asking someone to swim through a sewer and then come out clean mm. at the end of the process. It's not going to happen. Mm. The problem is that our system is designed to produce evil. Mm. Unless you redesign that system, it is not going to produce anything good. Mm. You would have the occasional systemic errors, some of them good and beneficial, not all are particularly good. The current president is a systemic error. He is the height of the hubris of that system. Another one might come that will be worse than that. But if you don't want bad rulers, reconstruct the system that is consistently producing them. Mm. Which one? In 23 years, you cannot actually count up to five persons. You would, you would have fingers left on the, thing, on the hand if you were counting five persons that have worked for the people within this system. The system will frustrate the person if they ever had any such intentions. Mm. And if they didn't have any such intentions, it will enable them to do what the system is already designed to do. Steal, kill, destroy. End of story. One thing is consistent. Every time we have um, Dele as a guest on the show, you learn a lot of things that sometimes you feel you feel like you come away from the conversation a little bit more despondent than when you started it just because <laughs> The no, 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 Ua, don't do this to me. No, don't do this to me. no, no do. but it's because you're no. telling the truth about the reality of our situation. Because if I take nothing but I else don't away, leave you without hope. Mm. yes, no, but I the don't thing leave is, you without hope. it's it's the change of mindset it's... now for me that says, how do we even be? So it's a bigger problem. If I change the people, yes. the system still exists. So the system is designed to make evil of good men yes. who are well-meaning. Mm. So right now, as a collective, we are all carrying our batons and, and our pom-poms and we're saying, let's get the right people. Mm. But well, then if we, we put in the right people... That what you're doing is mm. actually still feeding this same system mm -hmm. that doesn't work. So in fact, it now becomes a shift in mindset to say, okay, I need to put the system before the person but then I need the people to change the system. It's like a chicken and egg situation. So, um, so like give I us said, some small hope in a minute. Leave us with hope. <laughs> <laughs> because we're having a part two of this conversation very soon. Oh, is that me? Yes, I yeah. said you should give us some hope. Leave us with some hope in a minute. Okay, let me just say this to you. Um, a few years ago, I traveled over to Republic of Benin. That was in 1998. And the woman selling corn by the roadside in front of the hotel I stayed in in Kutonu, she had a mobile phone. And I came back to Lagos to the specter of having to be begging people to use their not nine not or go to a nightel office to make my phone call or a business center. Why am I talking about this? Today, in Nigeria, the same Nigeria, we're talking 23 years later, 24 years later, I'm able to sit in my house and use a telephone device to connect to a TV station that is not NTA, mm. simply because the Nigerian energy has been unbundled. Mm. Our problems are not intrinsic to us. We are not bad people. We are good people down the length and breadth of this country we are very good people it is the system that has hobbled us hmm. however if we ever get a few who stand up in the recognition of the fact that you cannot repair the disaster that is wiring what has happened to us cannot be repaired if anybody is coming up to say that i can repair nigeria or will restore there is nothing to restore there is nothing to repair you have to reimagine it hmm. if nigeria is reimagined the nigerian people are more than enough to turn nigeria around absolutely I'll, there is something i said to wow. you when we were off here okay 
I didn't know where. Yeah, we so we are so sorry, but we have to bring yes. you back again. As always, we hope you honor our invitation. Thank you so much, Dele Faro, to me for a fantastic a conversation. Oluwatayo Ali says, the system is so bad that it frustrates the good and destroys a lot. I went to INEC office to get my PVC that was lost. I was told nonsense and convinced that they can't confirm if I really registered or not. Well, why can't they just check the system? So this is, is a big issue. We're going to bring a part two of this conversation. As we always say, we talk about things, you know, hoping that, yes, people would listen. Thank you so much, Uti. Thank you again, Dele Faro, to me. Now, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagrams at Ratio Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. The most important office and the one which all of us can and should feel is that of the private citizen. We'll see you guys live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.